Yeah, you were asking about Geneva. Right? Yeah, I mean, I, it feels like an impossibly hard question to answer because it's like 25 plus years <laughs> of transition. No, but it's... But no, I'd it's, love, yeah, I mean, it's... I'm asking because it's like, in, in many respects, like super inspiring. Um, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of people are morphing from the culture of the West, the values of the West, feeling the sense of isolation, the lack of purpose, the lack of soul mission and centering. And everybody is kind of like the feels that is responding to it in varying different degrees, right? And you can start early with like meditation and yoga, and then you can start to go further down spiritual paths and so forth. Yeah. But you're probably the person that I know that's gone the furthest. Oh yeah. With that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and is just an embodiment of all of the riches that come from it. The mm -hmm. contentment, you know, like we was joking on the way in, you're the happiest person that I know, <laughs> which in Ubered really? takes, uh, oh, <laughs> takes them going. So, yeah, can you talk a little bit about, I don't know, where you were at in Geneva, where your life was at and sort of some of yeah, the transitions? Yeah. Yeah. I think that if, if I look at the, an overview about the process, right, it's right. very simple. I'm uh, 13 years old, I'm in Spain and I go through a, to a bookshop and then I see a book on yoga. Right, and it's called um, Integral Yoga from Sri Aurobindo. It's mm -hmm. in Spanish. This was uh, in the 70s, all right. And then I buy this book. I don't know why. And then I go like, there is something in this book. I, I wasn't. It was very complex. I couldn't understand what was in there. And then I start reading, and I, I feel like there is an energy coming in. So mm -hmm. that's the first hint. That's the first hook telling me like. There is something there that is not just the matrix life. And this is like 13 years old. Then years later, I go into yoga. I start practicing Hatha yoga. I'm 16. And then I start having kind of semi-mystical experiences, like sense of profound joy and things like that. And I go like, OK, something is happening here. And then um, I go back to studies, right? I'm university and so on. And I remember these feelings of uh, going outside in my village at night and being there on my bike, racing back and going through the streets and it's dark and there is these lights, you know, and nobody's there. The village is completely dead at night and being like, something's missing, like really an internal feeling or mm. something is missing, a, a connection with life force or something. And so then, you know, it's like hint, hint. And then in the beginning, the, the hooks are, are gentle. They are like, hello, <laughs> there is more. And then I keep on going and eventually, the, you know, then it becomes louder and louder. It's like flashing lights that are bumping into your face. And uh, sometimes because there is a, a traumatic experience coming into your field, right? It can be something simple, like having a, an interaction with somebody that is unpleasant. Or, and then you keep, I keep on searching, searching, searching. And eventually I start diving deeper into meditation practices and the more I practice, the more I start losing interest for the mainstream uh, science that I was doing, which was in geology. Mm. And then, uh, then the more I start meditating, the more it's like I feel like being, being pulled out of the matrix and entering into a different frequency. The more I strengthen this frequency through spiritual practices, then uh, the more that reality grows, and then at some point, it's like there is a breaking point. Mm. There's a breaking point where internally there is a calling that says, okay, now is the time. And I go like, I'm freaking out mm. because I've been preparing myself for 25 years of my life to be in a career. You know, this is what you do in Switzerland and in other parts of the world, but in Switzerland it's very strong. Like you start with something and then you, you don't just move around launching businesses. It's, it's more like you are in this career and you have been dedicating your life. So the moment I, I'm starting to feel, okay, it's time to step out. Actually, the moment uh, the decision happened, I was in San Francisco for a trip over there. I was supposed to go to uh, uh, a conference uh, consortium on, uh, on metamorphism, some type of geological research. And I, I canceled, I was like, I cannot, I cannot do it. I was with a friend, I said, fuck. I'm quitting. <laughs> I'm out. It was in the summer, went back, uh, spoke with my director and then uh, gently within a period of six months I was out. I withdrew myself from Switzerland and I was out free. And of course I was freaking out yeah. because I was like, I, I had a, an ashram or a place to go to in New Zealand. So I was within different systems, mysterious schools, and so I had connections or places where I could keep on evolving. But the rest of my life, I was like, I have no idea what it's going to look like. Right now, there is a clear open space, and this is what I feel I have to do. 
So the, fr the next, uh, I would say, four years, the first one and a half year was okay, because I, but then I started freaking out because money is running out, right? And then uh, the next, the following two years were, the, were really a struggle. Mm -hmm. Like I was, I tried to go back, do a master's, MBA, uh, you know, I, really? I, I tried, yeah, at some point I thought, okay, I have to reintegrate yeah. the matrix because it's not sustainable. But eventually doors opened up and eventually step by step. And then by 2002, then uh, I was like, okay, I'm ready to launch my coaching practice. Ta -da -da. So I, I started offering, doing my own offerings. But until now, until then was like going back to the Netherlands, painting some houses, making enough money to travel. And so it was, it was not the foundation, the physical foundation was very weak. I was a space junkie, <laughs> you know, like really activated in that. No drugs, just meditation and practices. Yeah. And very, very de dedicated. Um, I'm very fanatical in the way I approach it. Yeah. It's like, poof, go, okay, I get the hint, poof, cross the mountains in the middle of the winter <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with, uh, with a small backpack and a tiny little sleeping bag and just do it. And then, yeah. so the, it was, those were very strong impulses, but there was a very strong force guiding, guiding yeah. all Yeah, so that seek enlightenment like a man whose head's on fire seeks water to put it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> type thing. No, but there, there has been a, yeah, major, major moments of, of um, awakening yeah. that were telling me that I'm on the right track. Yeah. So at some point, precisely, um, I think, uh, 90, uh, yeah, 95 or 96, I was in Greece in, on some island because I was escaping the winter in, in Europe. And uh, I had precisely after two months of meditation in nature, just poof, like massive explosions. And, uh, and those are moments of revelation where my destiny line is being shown, where, where suddenly I realized what, yeah, what I could be doing or the energy that was sponsoring what I was doing. Yeah. And then eventually it's just a matter of finding the forms yeah. right, or the context and then organically the forms start taking place. Yeah. When did the tantric route come in for you? And like, what does, what does that mean to you versus the, like the Western misconception of it? Because most people think, you know, tantra yeah, yeah. is just, you know, the sort of a uh, boundless pursuit of sexual pleasure um, yeah, yeah. but it's actually a much broader philosophy and way of life and i'm curious yeah when that started calling you in and kind of like how you see it versus the misconception yeah. um so how how it started emerging the tantra uh of course you know from from the yoga field and everything all that was already present in my field uh, the sexual awareness of like that sex sex can be a meditation and a, and a practice that came uh, later I, I had uh, one of my girlfriends gave me um, a book which was called the Tao of Love so mm -hmm. this was from Taoist uh, but there was a lot of inspiration behind that and then uh, after that relationship I had another relationship with a woman with whom we, ha we were actively meditating and so the relationship itself became this energetic explosion of we were not in a, even in a, in a coupling experience. It was just like coming together and having these explosions of energies. And so we went really deep into it um, for a period of maybe six weeks in a retreat situation. We were like making love all the time and being like, and uh, then it made me realize of the, the power of, uh, of sexual energy when combined with, with spiritual practices. It was mind blowing. It was again one of those core moments of awakening. And then I was like, okay, now I get it. Before that, the idea of tantric sex, you know, I could understand, understand it on the mental level. I could understand and feel that there was something. But then once you get the experience and you go, okay, this is, this is real. And um, yeah, and then after that, I realized that relationships, when I had relationships in the past with that, that element, without that mystical dimension to it, then um, it felt a little bit more, more flat or you know, an energetic is missing. It's almost like you live on a sheet of paper mm. and you discover the third dimension mm. and you go like, whoa, you know, it's just like everything takes a very different, different shape. So it's, it is literally like entering into a new dimension mm. of, uh, of relating. And um, yeah, the second question about... Uh, yeah, misconception. West misconceptions. West, West, yeah. yeah. We're all doing our best, <laughs> basically. But yeah, within, uh, within the Tantra field, um, 
because Tantra has been so publicized in the West, this started in, uh, in the beginning of the 20th century with some teachers who came, you know, they, I mean, some, some Westerners, they went to India and then they came back with all these techniques and the Western world who was really contracted around sex, then of course everybody was like, oh, this is fantastic, we, we can play with that. So, um, yeah, that's one of the branches of within the tantric field, the Neo Tantra, that is extremely directed towards uh, sexual grat gratification and glorification. But of course, you know, Tantra is like 1500 years old tradition, and um, within that, it's, it's a really a vast range. What has been happening over the last 30 years on this planet is only a tiny mm. little experience that matches the needs of what people focus on right now. But deep inside, it's, it's like, it's, it's an energy reality. It's as if you, you arrive in, uh, in Asia and you visit Bali and you see that's all there is, right? It's, no, Asia is like so many different cultures and flavors and places and so on. So when I start exploring the field of Tantra, I try, you know, sometimes it's, there is a sexual element to it, which represents probably maybe 10% of my teachings. Mm -hmm. But then there is all the mantras and mystical dimension and the integration into the world, finding your mission and, and all that and bringing a dimension of secretness to, to all that. And so, yeah. But I want, I want to say that uh, I'm not, I think that there is a reason why it's so focused on sex. Mm. It's because it's a pain point in the Western world. When we look at the way we behave on a sexual level, uh, we're not scoring very high, mm -hmm. you know, we are maybe at 20% of our optimization. It's like there is lots of rape, uh, probably 80% of the planet is sexually deprived. It means everybody would like to have more, better, yeah. so more everybody juicy, says on, everybody better says sex. On their deathbed. It's like yeah. if, <laughs> if, if we offer that to somebody, most people around this planet would be a yes, unless they have some dogma or moral restraint around that. But basically, most people are craving to have a deeper, more profound experience. So now imagine what would happen on this planet if everybody was sexually satisfied. Like, it, it would completely change the decisions, the, the, the relationships, families, you know, it would be a completely different story. This is why I think that the, the, it's not humans who are being stupid and focusing on sex, it's the spirit of Tantra Imagine that there is this sphere of potential and that sphere incarnates itself through different teachers and different areas of the world and then it incarnates itself and it goes where it's needed the most. Right? So it goes like, oh, sex, there is pain there. You guys are sitting on a volcano of energy that you're not using and misusing and you don't know how to activate it and it's suppressing and make, it's making you sick. Let's see what happens if we start you know, nibbling or activating that flower inside of you, this, this garden of beauty, and then poof, start cultivating a little bit of that. And then the space opens up and it works. It's like once we start engaging into the sexual area and removing a lot of the shame and the guilt mm. and all the traumas and, and being very conscious and intentional, uh, and of course, creating a very sacred place with that, with using techniques, using energy techniques, using mantras and creating the sacredness, then uh, there is a whole new dimension, right? That, mm. that, that takes off. Mm. Do you have any experience with, with that, with tantric, uh, tantric sensuality? Or yeah, tantric that's what I was gonna go with. And actually, actually what's, what do you do when you're bringing in people at the very entry level in terms of like the exploration of their sensuality or their exploration of a, yeah, their sexuality and their sexual energy beyond the confines of what's just dogmatized in the West. Yeah. What's, what's, the, well, what's the, the start of the journey? That you the, the, way I, the way I approach it, uh, step number one, we're, we are going to activate the tantric temple, but not in a sexual way. First, activating simply the space. It means that uh, we're going to sing mantras, we're going to come into our bodies, energize, we're going to do some, some rituals. For instance, if you and I, if you were here and uh, you go like, oh, I'm really uh, interested in tantric sex, we will probably do like two or three sessions where we are not uh, even touching on the topic. Mm -hmm. First, we're going to feel, release, discover your shadows and have an understanding about how you function. Then once the ground 
work has been prepared and we start moving a little bit of sexual energy and see how it feels. And first, before you start engaging into connection with somebody, first it's solo practices. Mm -hmm. You want, who are you as a sexual being when there is nobody involved, mm -hmm. right? N nobody's present, nobody's touching you. It's like, where is my sexual energy? Like right now there is sexual fire inside of you. Mm -hmm. How intense is your turn on right now between zero and 10? Three. Uh, three, exactly. You're not turned on. You're not in a state of, mm, of sexual desire. But this energy is there. Yeah. We don't, we don't really look at it right now, but we could easily start looking at it and be like, okay, we're going to start moving it a little bit. Mm. And how do we move it? We would be like, breathing first, connecting, then you start moving your body a little bit, hip movements, and then you start adding the breathing, more strongly breathing, and then you start moving into orgasmic breath. Mm squeezing the perineum, adding touch. So all those are like self-love practices. There hasn't been any genital touch yet. Mm. You're not naked. Mm. <laughs> and we are two, two men. Yeah. And I'm not gay, I'm not sexually attracted to you, but we are cultivating sexual energy. Mm -hmm. So I call that vital sex. This is the art of cultivating precisely energy sex. Mm. And uh, it feels good, mm. it feels beautiful. Mm. It's mm. quite a provocative question, who are you as a sexual being when there's no one else in the room? Isn't yeah. it? It's not a question that most people ask themselves in their entire life. No, lifetime. exactly, Yeah, exactly. Because if you want to, um, to activate your sexual power, then you are going to watch porn, yeah. go to a, a quick fix and go straight to genital touch, which is, uh, it's fine. But I think that there is there's all this stuff over there that is a, a potential. And just by, by experiencing, you know, pleasure and sensuality, for instance, if you drink coconut water, I can drink it very fast or I can really take a moment to, to feel the flavors and the taste. So developing a, a sensitivity to, uh, to sensual experiences is much, much deeper. Mm. Like for instance, this is a bit of massage oil. And if you rub it, Mm. Then you uh, you start putting on on your hands and you can close your eyes and feeling precisely the uh, the depth of the sensual experience. You can look look at the mo the places where there is pain, uh, mm. and start exploring from that place. Right. Mm. So now we're coming to presence and mm. we are exploring through pleasure. Mm. That's what we are doing. Mm. But imagine now if we do that, you do that for a week and you train yourself yeah. to channel pleasure in your field. And then, then you connect with a woman. Yeah. Yeah, the moment she touches you, it's going to be like, <laughs> you're going to be exploding because yeah, then yeah. it's suddenly a, a, an upscaling of, yeah. of potential. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like, there's the conscious restraint component, right? Because, um, a large part, I guess, of Tantra has become, well, a part of Tantra has become famous for the kind of withholding of ejaculation, the withholding of that component in order to elongate the pleasure of yes. the rest of the experience. It's that there are tales of people doing that for years, decades. Is that something that you've explored? Yeah, I don't ejaculate. Yeah. <laughs> no. And now over here in Bali, it has been like 10 years. Before that, I cannot remember. I think in the, in the 10 years before, I probably ejaculated um, maybe 10 times in 10 years, I don't know. And over here, it has been one time conscious and a couple of wet dreams. Yeah. But that's it. Otherwise, I, I, um, I no longer see the, the benefits yeah. for, for myself yeah. of, uh, of ejaculating. It's just a release of energy that, then what? Then you, you go back to starting point, to start rebuilding. Yeah. Uh, so for myself, that's what, that's the decision that I make. Simply because every time I, I'm on the edge, and I go, should I ejaculate? And the answer is always no. <laughs> I never get a yes. So I go like, okay, well, then stick with that. And uh, in terms of what it does to my body, to my mind, yeah, I have the feeling that I'm, I'm in a better place by yeah. not ejaculating. Yeah. But I could, you know, at some point, if I get the green light, I say, okay, it's time to start releasing again, releasing semen. Yeah. And I'm going to be like, okay, let's try it. Because it's an experiment, you know, it's like, there might be something interesting for me to discover there yeah. that I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious how your journey has gone with the idea of, as you said, most 
people on planet Earth are pretty sexually deprived, men in particular, going into a world of exploring one's tantric energy, opening up to that field of energy. I could easily see a situation where a lot of men are sort of feel like they're opening up to just the, an absolute theme park, a treasure trove of potential sexual opportunities and so forth. Yes. And then all of the kind of communication challenges and so forth that come with potentially pursuing sort of polyamorous arrangements or mm -hmm. like multiple sexual partners and so forth and um, managing like the attachments and the hurts and so forth with all of yeah. that. that seems it's a jungle. Like, <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course it can yeah. be very challenging. Yeah. Is there an entire branch of Tantra in uh, communication skills? Yes. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 This is why we have a field of you know, we create very strong safety around around certain things. Yeah. Around communication. Um, for many people in the community, we have like this sequence of questions that we're going to ask before having intercourse with somebody. You heard about that? Mm -mm. So it's R B D S M A T. R B D S M M A T. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, relationship status, boundaries, desire, sexual history, the meaning that you give to that, what you need enough to care, and are there any traumas in your field? So we're gonna, you know, we spend half an hour checking that, and then especially when it comes to the meaning that you give to that experience, mm. if there is a dissonance at that point, then it's going to come out. If if two people are honest, the idea is to do this practice from a honest place. Yeah and you check on potential STIs or STDs or things like that. So this creates a, a field of safety. In my experience, when, when you do that, then everybody can, you know, chill and relax. If you are engaging into, into a sexual connection with somebody and you don't know what the other person's agenda is, then it can be very destabilizing. And uh, the day after, you might freak out because it's not what you thought it was. Yeah, I feel that's a lot of people's yeah. sexual experiences. So it's a matter of, of matching matching the agendas and mat matching the, the, the meaning that we give to that. And uh, that's pretty easy to navigate if two people are honest with each other. Yeah. And they check before, like it's really important. And you go like, well, I, I don't want to check because I don't want to kill the romance. But in my experience, it makes it way more romantic mm. to, to create the safety. Mm. It means that you can really relax in the experience, mm. knowing, you know, and when you check on, for instance, on the boundaries, like you can be, are uh, you comfortable with having intercourse tonight or, or not? Mm. So it might be a bit too much. Then you see, you, you hold back. You know, like, what's the level of comfort mm. that you are, yeah, mm. that you feel mm. is a match for you? What's, um, I mean, you've been in this path such a long time now, what's present for you at the moment in terms of your journey of discovery of Tantra and what you're working through? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Like right now, there are quite a few uh, topics that are emerging in my field. Um, one of them, which is very, very present in the field right now, is uh, the idea of emotional mastery. Mm -hmm. And uh, because in, uh, in relationships, interactions, that's, that's the place where uh, partners tend to be struggling the most, getting triggered by each other, right? So it's finding um, the sequences of protocols on how to navigate that with very simple. And uh, that's one of the areas. Another one I'm discovering, the diving deeper into this idea of uh, personas or, or archetypes. For instance, you have different fields of frequency inside of you. There mm -hmm. is, you can behave like a child, you can yeah. behave like a mature partner, you can behave like a, uh, an entrepreneur, right? And uh, you can behave like somebody who wants to save the planet and, and be really a protector for the human race, right? So you have all those different possible archetypes. And my belief is that probably two or three of them are going to be immature. Mm -hmm. Some of them are going to be neutral and some of them, this is where you shine, really. And so understanding a little bit this, this dynamics, I think, is really, really good. Um, something else that is very present in my field is that uh, organizing the, the teachings, because <laughs> I was sorting through the, my materials this morning and it's just like uh, there is so much. Yeah. And, uh, and um, I'm trying to, um, constantly trying to find a way of bringing that into the world. and. Uh, 
and um, yeah, and uh, it's creating the models. You know, is like organizing everything. Like for me, it's one of the things that I get a lot of, of joy into because it's like it really anchors the teachings in a way that is uh, logical and and well well grounded. So that's that's one uh, some of the topics. And when it comes to uh, yeah, relationships and dating and connections, that's also something that I'm actively um, yeah, constantly researching and playing with. You know, if I'm single, then I'm going on dates and connections, and each connection is going to, to be an exploration. And uh, I don't usually engage into casual sex. Um, we start diving deep after one month of connecting, then eventually we, we open the space for diving deeper into that. So that's my, my relating, relating style. Um, yeah, and then another thing that I'm discovering is here with the groups that I'm having here on Tuesday with the men and um, on Thursday with the mixed group is like it's such a laboratory of experimentation. Mm -hmm. So I've, uh, I found it's a really juicy space mm -hmm. uh, to be in with, uh, with people because mm. we start precisely, we put some seats and then things start moving and uh, happening and I realized that um, yeah, the pathways to life optimization or life mastery can be m more and more precise, you know. For instance, if you want to climb the Everest, you might be like with a guide, right? You ride with a Sherpa and he says, well, here's the route, you know, and he just shows uh, more or less where you're supposed to be going and then you figure it out while you're on the way. Or it can be a very detailed mm. map of all the obstacles that you're going to uh, encounter and be much more detailed. Mm. So right now, when it comes to the spiritual path, it's like, if you enter into an existing existing system, like for instance the Buddhist system or Kabbalah or so on, there is going to be traditions that are established and you follow those steps, right? Mm -hmm. It's like different teachings. But with what I'm doing here, because those are new teachings to a certain extent, you know, they're being designed uh, right now, then I've got to, to figure out, you know, the, the exact steps. For instance, if I... If you made a mistake with your partner, right? And I say, well, you have to apologize to, to her. You're like, okay, I apologize. What's <laughs> how, how do you apologize? Yeah. You know, what is a, a way of, of nailing an apology that is really going to work? So that's that has to do with with communication, and it's a very specific thing. Like the other day, I identified five steps, and is every step is one or two words, right? Assume fault, uh, feel the other person, and no, no, no. you know, so you have a, a very simple sequence. So if that sequence is there on the wall and then you can anchor it, but for most people, they are not going to have this sequence that mm -hmm. is active in their field. So they, when they have to apologize, they are kind of improvising Bumbling, or yeah. something. Whereas if, uh, you know, a little bit like when you go to the gym, you go like, okay, well, you have a set of movements and you know what those movements are. It's very precise. So I feel like when it comes to relationships and spirituality, it's, it should be a little bit the same. Yeah. Like you have Hatha Yoga, it's very precise in the moves. Downward dog, everybody knows what to do. Warrior one, warrior two, warrior three. It's all very precise in, in terms. But when it comes to, uh, to for instance, yeah, precisely communication, uh, unless you practice NVC, then there is some precision there. Mm -hmm. But it's still kind of, kind of vague. It's not like, boom. Um, so this is what I'm, I'm trying to do with, with the spiritual system. You come over here, you never had a mystical experience. How do we go from here to where you could be? And um, I'm, yeah, I'm very passionate about, about that exploration. That's, awesome. what's, that's what's alive. Can we have a little tour of the, of the temple? That's yes, right. yeah, yes, of course. To, uh, yeah, to see it. <coughs> It's such a special space, so it merits.